So what's happening is you have rebar in this beam. The salt water from the, from the ocean, or from the gulf rather, penetrates into the concrete over time through rain and through our atmosphere. And as it does, it causes the steel to rust and expand. And as the steel rusts and expands, it blows the concrete off the building. You can see where that rebar was. Or what's left of the rebar, I should say. Hello, welcome back to Building Integrity. I'm your host, Josh Porter. And in this video, we are going to be learning about how buildings age, specifically reinforced concrete buildings, and what spalling is exactly. So let's get right into it. Concrete spalling, as mentioned in the video leading up to this, uh, is the expansion of the steel causing out a blowout of the concrete. And in this picture, we can see a return wall uh, on, a, on a lanai at a condominium, and we can see what appears to be a large crack in the face of this end wall, which I circled here. Now, a lot of people might look at this and just see it as a crack only. But when we went out to the job site and we actually sounded this, which is a technique where we use a hammer and our hands to actually feel the vibrations in the building or hear the sound that's coming out of the hammer when we ring, against, ring it against the concrete, we actually could tell that this was a concrete spall. So the orange paint on the left shows the area where we told the contractor to cut out this section. And after he did that, we were left looking at this. Now, this is showing the rebar inside the end wall here. This was a solid concrete end wall. And if we zoom in on that rebar, we can see that at the base, the rebar has quite a bit of rust. And so this is where most of that expansive energy came out to break apart and blow out that corner of the building. But if you look up in the upper section, the steel actually looks quite a bit better. In fact, where I've circled it, you can actually see that there is quite a bit of concrete dust still bonded to the rebar. Now, this is really important because when concrete is cast around the steel, the deformations on the steel, the roughness of the surface of the rebar, uh, forms a mechanical bond with the steel and the concrete between the two of them. Well, that bond gets weakened as the steel begins to rust and it wants to push that concrete away. And so you can notice that distinction down here at the bottom where there's very little to no rust uh, uh, concrete dust stuck to the rebar. So let's talk a little bit about uh, why buildings age, why reinforced concrete buildings age in this way and what actually is happening inside this concrete element uh, that causes concrete spalling. So we're going to take a sample here, a little diagram of a slab edge. So imagine we're slicing this like a slice of bread and we're looking at it, this slab edge sideways. Here is the top and here is the edge of the slab. Okay, so in this uh, case, we have two pieces of rebar, one in the top and one in the bottom, and the rest of the gray area is our concrete. Now concrete, when it's first cast and poured around the steel, has a pH of around 13. Now pH is simply a measurement of how acidic an environment is, with zero being the most acidic and then 14 being the most basic or alkaline in the environment. So you can see that when concrete is first cast around the steel, it has a very alkaline environment. It has a very high pH around 13. And of course, this depends on other factors of, of, of how well it was placed and how well it was mixed. Now, in order for the steel to actually start rusting inside the concrete, it needs three things. It needs water, it needs oxygen, and it needs to be in a pH environment of less than 10, roughly. All right. And so you can see that when the concrete is first poured, because it has such a high pH of 13, that essentially it creates this layer of passivity, is what we call it, a layer of passivity around the rebar, which prevents this rebar from chemically reacting with the environment around it, thus creating rust. 
So the, the high pH of the concrete is really what's important in protecting a reinforced concrete structure, not necessarily the steel. The steel will be, will be protected as a secondary result of protecting the concrete. Okay, so what happens over time? Well, we have rain, we have water, we have uh, sea salt exposure. And so every time it rains and every time water gets onto our concrete structures, that water soaks into the concrete. Concrete is not inherently waterproof. So water will soak into the pores of the concrete. Now, concrete for curing purposes likes water. That's a good thing, that's not a bad thing. But the problem with the weathering effect of water, rainfall, is that it brings with it um, the uh, elements like salt in the air and it brings with it carbon dioxide from the air. And so you have your concrete, which is a high pH of 13, but then every time it rains, it brings in carbon dioxide from the air and it brings in sodium chloride, especially if it's a coastal structure and it's got a lot of salt sea spray and things like that. Now, sodium chloride dissolves into a weak base which is the sodium part of it, and a weak acid, which is the chlorine part of it. And every time it rains, and then every time it dries out, and every time it rains, and every time it dries out on this cycle, that chlorine builds up and that weak acid builds up inside the concrete. So where you started with a high pH of 13, eventually the outer layers of this concrete that is most directly exposed to the weather will lower, it will become a little bit more acidic. So here you can see that it drops down to a pH of 12. Now over time, five, 10, 12 years, it all depends on how good the concrete is and how well it's mixed, but that acidity will push into the concrete deeper and then the outer layers will become even more acidic. So you can see here in our diagram, now the outer layers have a pH of approximately 11, the pH of 12 has pushed in deeper, but the rest of the concrete below is still a pH of 13. Now remember, steel in order to rust needs oxygen, water, and a pH environment less than 10. So we're still good, no rusting has occurred, and your building might look great 15 years, 20 years later, but it might be at this stage. Now you can't see these color striations I'm giving. It, I'm just showing them to you for, uh, for, for this example to make it easier to understand. But when you're looking at the building, you can't really see these uh, colors. It just looks like regular concrete. But here's what happens as time goes on. The outer rim, uh, the outer uh, extents of your slab starts dropping in pH even faster. Now we're right on the brink of giving the steel what it needs. Because remember, every time it rains, that water's soaking right into the concrete and the concrete is porous, so oxygen can access the water, the steel, water can access the steel, but we need that pH environment to drop below 10 in order for the steel to start rusting. So here we are, we're at a building that's maybe 15, 20 years old, who knows, right? But it's, it's, it's now aged along the process, no problems, no cracks, no spalls, everybody thinks everything's fine. Well then eventually, uh, that acidity pushes in deeper into the concrete and we're left with an outer extents of our slab that is below 10. So now we've got everything we need. We know we've got the water coming in, soaking into the concrete. We know we have the oxygen present in the, in the water and in the concrete. And now we have an environment at some of the steel of a pH of less than 10. And so what will happen is, is that very outer perimeter of the steel will begin to rust and corrode. Now remember, when steel turns into rust, it expands. That chemi chemical reaction creates a more voluminous amount of material. The rust is bigger than the steel. So the rust will expand to about four times the volume of the steel, and that outer pushing pressure it creates tension inside the concrete, which concrete is terrible at taking tension, and so the concrete cracks and breaks off at the corner. And so slab, this creates what we call slab edge repairs, which is usually the first major restoration that a building will go through is the slab edge repair process. Now, assuming that this gets caught at this point and you get a good engineer involved and you get a good contractor involved, they will conduct an ICRI standard repair. ICRI stands for International Concrete Repair Institute. And the International Concrete Repair Institute creates specifications and recommendations which have now been mostly adopted by ACI, the American Concrete Institute, and uh, for how to conduct these types of repairs. So the contractor will come along and they will cut out some sort of section of the corner of the slab uh, as shown in this manner here. And then they will replace that concrete 
with new patched concrete. So they'll clean the rust off of the steel, they'll coat the steel in a protective product, and then they'll place back new concrete patch material. But the acidic environment of your slab still looks as I have it shown here. Now you notice that the steel is no longer in contact with any zone of a pH less than 10. And your patch area actually has a very high pH, pH of 13, just like the original concrete did. But if you don't waterproof this slab, or you waterproof it and then compromise it and damage it by installing tile or other flooring materials and not properly installing those products, and water continues to be allowed to access the rest of the concrete, eventually, and this doesn't take long after this restoration, five between five and 10 years, usually in my experience, you will see that the environment will become like this. So now there is no more uh, pH 13 environment left in this concrete slab. Your new patch has actually dropped down to a pH of 12. And now you're, a lot of rebar is in this environment of less than a pH of 10. So now you've got a lot of steel in contact with water, in contact with oxygen, and in contact with an area or an environment less than pH of 10. And so then what happens is even more rust accumulates on the steel, which creates more outward pressure and breaks apart the concrete and creates even larger spalls. And you can see in this example, which is exemplary of a lot of projects and buildings that I have been on, you can see that the repair that was done just five to 10 years prior now probably needs to come out as well in order to do all the previous repairs because preventative maintenance was not conducted on this building. So hopefully you guys now have a better understanding of the way concrete ages the importance of focusing on the concrete, protecting the concrete, waterproofing the concrete, and keeping the environment away from the concrete, as opposed to focusing so much on the reinforcing steel. If we focus on protecting the concrete, keeping the pH up, and keeping that environment good, the steel will be protected over time anyway. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.